So now that you know how to store primitive data, it's time to change it. Let's return to our cell phone contract example. You probably remember the problem statement. We're comparing the cost of two cell phone plans. We have our super saver plan, and we have our big talker plan. If you talk for 1,200 minutes a month, which plan should you choose? Now, the next thing we need to do is to select some operations. Choosing a cell phone contract requires mathematical operations. So the first thing we need to do is to remember what our variables were called. We chose these in the last version of this program. There's int plan minutes, int talk minutes, int monthly cost pennies, int additional minutes pennies, int plan name, and what we want to do is assign values to the variables for the super saver plan. Now if you wonder why I'm looking at the super saver instead of the big talker, it doesn't really matter which one I look at. But it does matter that we pick one and stick with it. The other thing to notice right now, you may have thought that I was a little crazy with the variable names making them unnecessarily long and complicated. But now that you're looking at this a little bit later, isn't it nice to have variable names that mean something? That's why we pick the long variable names to start with and why you should do the same. So here are the initializations. The plan minutes are 500. The talk minutes are 1,200. The monthly cost in pennies is 39.99. Notice there's no decimal point in that because remember we decided to store it in pennies. Our additional minutes in pennies are five. And our plan name is super saver. Remember double quotes, not single quotes because we have a string. So there all of our variables are now assigned. Now, what we'll do when we put in the big talker plan is just change the constants. We won't have to change the variable names at all. We know that the cost is the sum of the monthly cost of the plan and the cost of additional minutes. So we're going to need to store a result. This means we need another variable. So we'll say int total cost in pennies. Well, notice that I'm keeping the name pennies in there because I'm storing it as an integer. We need to initialize the cost of the monthly plan. So that is total cost in pennies equals monthly cost in pennies. Remember that assignment works from the right to the left. So when you have the monthly cost in pennies on the right, that gets stored in the total cost on the left. It's pretty common for new programmers to get confused about that. It actually even has a name It's so common. It's called assignment dyslexia. So pay attention to which one is on the right and on the left because it really matters. Now let's add in the additional minutes. The number of additional minutes is talk minutes minus plan minutes. The cost of these minutes is additional minutes in pennies times talk minutes minus plan minutes. Notice that I put parentheses around talk minutes minus plan minutes. Those parentheses are necessary because remember that multiplication has higher precedence than subtraction. So if we didn't have the parentheses there, the additional minutes in pennies would only be multiplying the talk minutes. The subtraction of the plan minutes wouldn't have happened correctly. So that would be a problem. Now let's add to the plan cost. There are two different ways we can do it. We can say total cost in pennies is total cost in pennies plus additional minutes in pennies times talk minutes minus plan minutes in parentheses. Or we could say the total cost in pennies is the monthly cost in pennies plus additional minutes in pennies times talk minutes minus plan minutes. This is pretty typical in programming where there are often lots of different ways that you can do things and neither way is necessarily right or wrong. If I were going to do it myself, I'd probably pick the second way because it doesn't depend on total cost in pennies having been initialized correctly. So here's some food for thought. First off, why didn't I use shorter variable names? Often my beginning students want to call everything x, y, and z. They think they're saving a lot of time because it's easy to type x, y, and z. But the truth is the big time that you spend in programming isn't the typing. It's finding mistakes in your program. And it's a lot harder to find mistakes if you don't know what the variables mean. Now the other question you might have at this point is how did I figure out the operations? The easiest way to do this is to think of how you would do it by hand using numbers and then substitute in the variables. So for example, if you knew that this calculation was done with 39.99 plus 1200 minus 500 times 0.05, you'd be in great shape because you could just look and see what we called those numbers and substitute them in. Now one other thing you might want to think about is what happens if we only talk 400 minutes? 
Well, if you look at the formula above, you'll see you'd get 39.99 plus 400 minus 500 times 0.05. And that is a bit of a problem. The problem is that 400 minus 500 is negative. And what that means is that you're going to get a refund back on those additional minutes. Now, I don't know how well you all know cell phone companies, but let me assure you that is not how that happens. So we've got a problem, and we actually don't have the tools to solve it yet. But the good news is we will in one more section. So be patient and we'll get there.